Judgment in the appeal, the Queen on the application of Riley and another against the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions. Lord Toulson will announce the decision of the court. This appeal is about job seekers' allowance. In 2005, the Job Seekers Act was amended to enable the Secretary of State to make regulations under which benefits could be made conditional on job seekers going on appropriate schemes for the purpose of helping them to find employment. The impetus for this was a rise in the number of people receiving job seekers allowance, especially long term, at correspondingly high cost to the public. Regulations were made in 2011 under which two schemes were introduced. One was called the Sector Based Work Academy Scheme, or SBWA. This was aimed at people who were not long term unemployed and who it was thought would benefit from a short work placement linked to a genuine job vacancy. The second was called the Community Action Programme, or CAP, and was aimed at the long-term unemployed. The administration of the schemes was contracted out to private companies. The legality of the regulations and the process for administering them were challenged by the two claimants. Ms. Riley had been required to take part in the SBWA and Mr. Wilson in the CAP. The Court of Appeal upheld the challenges. More particularly, it held that the 2011 regulations were invalid because they did not contain the information which the Act required. The Act said, regulations may provide, may make provision for or in connection with imposing on claimants in prescribed circumstances a requirement to participate in schemes of any prescribed description that are designed to assist them to obtain employment. The critical words are prescribed circumstances and prescribed description. In the view of the Court of Appeal, the regulations were defective because they merely repeated the language of the Act without any further description of the schemes which were intended to be introduced. The Court of Appeal also held that the procedures which were followed in relation to the claimants were inadequate. In the case of Ms. Riley, this part of the claim was conceded by the Department because she was not told that she was required to take part because sorry, because she was told that she was required to take part in the SBWA scheme when in fact she was not. In the case of uh, Mr. Wilson, the Court held that uh, the notice which he was given requiring him to take part in the scheme was defective because it didn't contain the information which the regulations required. On the same day that the Court of Appeal handed down its judgment, new regulations were brought into force, correcting for the future the flaws in the 2011 regulations. Six weeks later, on the 26th of March 2013, a new act was passed which retrospectively validated the 2011 regulations, any notices served under them, and any benefit sanctions which had been applied. At the same time, the Secretary of State applied for permission to appeal to this court. This uh, application was granted because it was thought that the case raised questions relevant to the drafting of regulations more generally. This court has reached the same view as the Court of Appeal, both in relation to the question whether the 2011 regulations met the requirements of the Act, and on the question whether the notice given to Mr. Wilson met the requirements of the regulations. On the appeal, the respondents have raised two wider questions. First, they seek a declaration that the Secretary of State was lawfully required to publish and make available to job seekers the terms of the schemes. The court declines to make such a declaration because it would state the duty of a Secretary of State too widely. The Secretary of State owed a duty as a matter of fairness to see that Ms. Riley and Mr. Wilson were provided with enough information about the SW, SBWA scheme and the CAP respectively 
for them to be able to make informed and meaningful representations to the decision maker before a notice requiring their participation was served on them. But it would be wrong for a court to prescribe how that information was to be given. Secondly, Ms. Riley argues that the work which she was required to do amounted to forced labour in contravention of Article 4 of the European Convention. The court rejects the argument that a scheme for conditional benefits of a type with which we are concerned falls within the concept of forced labour under Article 4. The fact that the scheme was unlawfully applied as a matter of domestic law makes no difference. The upshot is that but for the 2013 Act retrospectively validating the 2011 regulations and what was done under them, this court would simply have affirmed the Court of Appeal's decision. But we cannot ignore the effect of the uh, 2013 Act and the parties are invited to uh, try to agree the appropriate form of order in these unusual circumstances. Thank you. The court is now adjourned. <laughs>